Number 9. Lobster Diver Swallowed by Whale On the morning of June 11, 2021, 56-year-old veteran lobster diver Michael Packard left his Provincetown, Massachusetts home to go diving for shellfish in what was supposed to be his second dive that day. But things took a quick turn towards the weird and wild when Packard was 10 feet or just about 3 meters under the ocean surface and suddenly found himself in the mouth of a humpback whale. He described the experience as feeling like, quote, a huge shove before everything went completely black. At first, Packard thought a great white shark was the culprit, but after noticing that there weren't any sharp teeth in its mouth or whatever animal had swallowed him, he realized it was actually a whale instead. In panic, Packard started to struggle and move his scuba gear around, which irritated the whale and made it thrash its head about until it broke the surface of the water. Packard saw the light and realized he was now above the waterline, so he struggled even more until the whale spit him out. He he later described the whale as medium-sized, which led some people, including Juke Robbins, the director of Humpback Whale Studies in Provincetown, to believe that the whale was just a juvenile who made a mistake when trying to hunt in the same area Packard was in. Robbins also said situations where humpback whales injure or kill humans are so rare that they almost never happen, which makes what happened to Packard a one-off incident unless you count fictional tales like Moby Dick. Number 8 remains of Florida man found inside alligator. Lurking in the depths of swamps, hiding in the brush of tall grass, or waiting just behind a corner are creatures capable of monstrous acts. 45-year-old Michael Ford II from Florida went missing four days before parts of his body were discovered in the stomach of a giant alligator. Ford's official cause of death was listed as a drug overdose on meth, and it turns out he was dead before the creature got to him. This was confirmed when one of his hands and a foot was found in the alligator's digestive tract. At some point after Michael's death, the animal found and ate him. Part of his remains were found in a canal near the Polk County Phosphate Mine. There, a worker noticed an alligator getting dangerously close and called the Florida Fish and Wildlife Commission to help deal with the situation. When they arrived, they noticed what looked like a human body part stuck inside the reptile's mouth. Once authorities arrived at the scene, they trapped and killed the gator and immediately dissected it. Discovering that it was almost 12 feet or just about 3.6 meters long, weighing in at about 450 or just over 200 kilograms, and had four jumbled remains in its gut. After the story broke into the news, people started wondering if the gator killed Ford or if just found his body and ate him after he died. So with that in mind, officials told the public that the animal hadn't physically killed Ford itself. This calmed people's nerves just a little bit. Once it was revealed that his truck was also found near the scene, people wondered why Ford was on the grounds of the Mosaic Mine in the first place since he wasn't an employee of the company and had no reason to be in or on the canals. His father let officials know he wasn't a fisherman and wouldn't have been at the canal to fish like some trespassers had in the past. Turns out Michael just got a little too high at the wrong place at the wrong time. Number 7. Python Swallows Woman in Indonesia An Indonesian woman named Watiba mysteriously vanished in early June 2018 after last being seen alive peacefully checking in on the vegetables growing in her garden. A search party was formed to find her on the Indonesian island of Muna. Not long after, her shoes were found, but all other evidence of her whereabouts, dead or alive, were missing. It wasn't until members of the search party noticed a huge, bloated snake nearby where they located her sandals that they put the pieces together. Residents of the area ended up killing the snake and cutting it open to find Tiba's fully intact body. The snake was identified as a reticulated python, so maybe those shoulders aren't as big of a problem as we thought. While it is not common for these snakes to prey on humans and the cases are few and far between, habitat destruction has pushed some snakes to hunt outside of their usual comfort zones, which is often what leads to cases such as this. Number 6. The Wolf Dogs Who Ate Their Owner Sandra L. Piovazin from Westmoreland County, Pennsylvania owned nine wolf dogs, who she deeply cherished and treasured, claiming that they gave her unqualified love. She was not described as a member of the official United States American Wolf Dog Association, though, which helps people register their wolf dogs as actual legal pets. Members of the group said they didn't recognize her name as a member of the organization. Piovazin lived by herself and rarely had any visitors after her and her husband divorced and her daughter moved away. She adopted and raised all nine of her wolf dogs herself, but she didn't have a license to own them, which is legally required. 
She also owned two Rottweilers who lived separately from the wolf dogs. Neighbors claimed that Piavazin took good care of the animals, and that she provided them with enough food and even got toys for them to play with. But this still didn't prevent tragedy from striking in 2006, when Sandra was found dead and gnawed on by her wolf dog enclosure. All nine dogs were later euthanized, and the autopsy of Piavazin's body determined her cause of death was an extensive amount of soft tissue trauma and injuries to her body. Even with all the love in the world, wild animals still act on instinct and can be incredibly dangerous. Sadly, Sandra didn't live to properly learn that lesson. Do you think people should be allowed to have wolf dogs as pets? Tell us what you think in the comments below and hit that subscribe button while you're at it. Number 5 Snake Eats Man Hole in Indonesia When 25-year-old Akbar Salabiro was reported missing on March 26, 2017, no one could have guessed where the young man had ended up. But when a group of men found a suspiciously massive reticulated python and cut it open, Salabiro was found dead inside the snake's stomach. Experts say it was unlikely Celebiro was eaten alive, since species of this python almost always kill its prey before eating. This body was found fully intact, meaning the snake had to have swallowed him whole in one bite. Mary Ruth Lowe, an expert working at the Singapore Zoo, stated the only real obstacle the snake would have faced while eating a human whole would have been on the shoulder blades. While pythons have the ability to unhinge their jaws wide enough to easily eat bigger animals, human shoulder bones aren't as collapsible, which would have presented a challenge for the snake. A professor from Hassanuddin University pinpointed the cause of the attack on the ever-changing natural environments and shifting availability of the snake's usual food sources, which pushed this particular python to hunt in the palm oil plant. Plantation Akbar Salubiro happened to work in. Whether it was difficult for the snake to eat Akbar or not, the facts remain, and Akbar had one really terrible day at work. Number 4 Boy Found Inside Malaysian Crocodile A 14 year old boy living in Malaysia was ferociously snatched from a riverbank by a large crocodile in August 2020. Ricky Ganya had been out with his family just collecting snails along a river in his hometown of Kuching when a 14-foot or just over 4-meter crocodile swiftly emerged from the water and grabbed him by his leg. The reptile dragged Ganya underwater with it while his family panicked and called for help from anyone nearby. Tragically, Ganya was long gone by the time emergency services made it to the scene. They were able to locate the crocodile four days after the attack took place and, using some chicken to lure it out of the water, they trapped the animal with a snare. By following a hook attached to the chicken, they found the beast three miles or just under five kilometers from where it ate Ganya. Residents of the area ended up killing the crocodile and cutting its gut open to find Ganya's clothes, as well as a number of human remains that were eventually determined to be the young boys. Number 3. India's Man-Eating Tiger Issue While India only accounts for 25% of the globe's wild tiger habitats, about 70% of all tigers in the world live there, which comes out to around 3,000 big cats. But with this large population of tigers in one country alone comes a series of challenges, mainly hostile and fatal interactions between humans and the cats. One case is seen with Hanumantha Nayaka in 2019, when he didn't return from gathering firewood at the time he promised, his wife Gopama immediately felt like something was wrong. The couple's son quickly formed a search party to look for his father, only to find his half-eaten remains and a tiger laying next to them not far in the nearby forest. People living in rural India have grown used to the potentially deadly wildlife surrounding them, but this doesn't stop the attacks. There are usually about 50 individuals fatally killed by tigers each year. This number is beginning to cause fear and panic, leaning to hostility towards tigers and increased targeted killings of them. This has worried animal experts and environmentalists, considering that only 10 to 15 percent of tigers are reported to have developed, quote, man-eating behaviors, possibly from the interactions with these biased humans. Number 2. The 1916 New Jersey Shark Attacks Way back in 1916 in New Jersey, a series of shark attacks went down from July 1st to the 12th. Due to a massive heat wave at the time, people were spending lots of time at the beach and crowding the waters. This led to five separate shark attacks over the 11-day period, and only one of these victims made it out alive to tell their tale. The 28-year-old's name was Charles Van San. He was staying at the Ingleside Hotel in Beach Haven, New Jersey with some family, and decided to take a quick swim in the ocean before heading back for dinner. While he was in the water, a shark bit Van San's legs, trying to pull him under. 
In the struggle, he got the attention of a nearby lifeguard, Alexander Ott, who was able to get him free of the shark. Unfortunately, he survived a short while longer after the attack, but died shortly after on the hotel manager's desk from blood loss. Despite this terrible scene, beaches remained open in the wake of the attack. The second major incident happened on July 6th, when Swiss Bell Captain Charles Bruder was killed and half-eaten from the waist down by a shark in Spring Lake. The next two attacks went down at the same spot, a tidal inlet in the town of Keyport. Around 2 p.m. in the afternoon, a group of young friends were playing together in the water. One of them spotted a shark fin nearby, but at that point, it was too late. The shark pulled 11-year-old Lester Stilwell under the water. The others ran to town for help, getting the attention of a local businessman named Watson Stanley Fisher, who rushed to the inlet to try and save the boy. He swam out to pull Lester from the water, but ended up getting targeted by the shark too. Fisher died from blood loss later in the evening, while Stilwell's body was recovered from the water sometime later. The fifth and final attack happened at the same location, only half an hour after the incident with Fisher and Stilwell. 14-year-old Joseph Dunn was bit by the shark, but ended up making it to the hospital, fully recovering. These attacks sparked panic and interest among the American people, and have since sustained a place in popular culture after being the inspiration for the content like Shark Week. Number 1. The Savo Man-Eating Lions Back in 1898 in the Savo region of Kenya, a pair of maneless male lions terrorized and killed several workers that were building the Kenya-Uganda Railway. These attacks happened between March and December that year, and the lives of many were taken by the hands of only two distinct lions. Lieutenant Colonel John Henry Patterson arrived to oversee the project after news of the attacks broke out. The lions stalked the workers' campsite, picking them off from their tents at night one by one and taking them into their nearby trees to devour them. At first, the beasts would attack one at a time, but eventually both lions started getting more confident, hunting the workers at the same time, walking into the camp together and each taking a worker as a reward. These attacks created fear and panic, and hundreds fled the site, putting a dramatic pause on the construction. The lions became formally known as the Savo Maneaters, and as attacks increased, officials began traveling to the site to investigate and stop the slaughter. Patterson set several traps for the lions, and 20 armed men were sent to the location to help solve the problem. After a few attempts that were unsuccessful, Patterson was able to kill one of the lions on December 9th, but the other one remained at large. After a struggle, he killed the second lion while it tried to attack him. In total, Patterson estimates that nearly 135 men were killed by the beasts, but the exact number still remains unknown. At the time, the lion skins were turned into life-size models, and the skulls are now both open to be viewed by the public in the Field Museum in Chicago, Illinois. Thanks for watching! Have you heard of any other stories of animals eating people? If we miss one that you've heard of, be sure to leave that listing in the comments down below. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more videos like these. See you next time on The Bad Badger!